Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about a combined model strategy that I think is looking pretty promising. So in times like this, when Bitcoin is going you know, sideways to down and altcoins are getting crushed, I like to zoom out and think in a more cyclical kind of market cycle type of way and think about what data-driven strategies might be useful to capture these broader sweeps and movements and kind of forget about the short-term price movements. Think about more what's the signal that we can gain across this broader cycle and that's really ultimately in crypto where all the money is made so before i get into the strategy that i have been playing around with that i think looks quite interesting i did just want to give a quick reminder that as i record this tomorrow so i'm recording this on the 12th of june so on june 13th we're going to be launching our polarity digital pro subscription service and on that day so on the 13th tomorrow as i record this we're having a one day sale where you can lock in a price of $10 per month. After that sale, the price will go up. and It'll never be $10 again. But we wanted to give people who've been supporting us for a while a chance to get in at the ground level at what we think is a very good price. And so you'll have access not just to all the models that we have currently on PolarityDigital.io, but also new models as well, such as our forecast model, such as our market uh, trend model or market cycle model and also exclusive content and more there's gonna be a lot of stuff coming to the site lock in at ten dollars tomorrow only chance you'll have to lock in at that low rate so let's go ahead and talk about the strategy so you know being having the udpi open the udpi long term open this is one of the models that is going to be included in this strategy and the udpi is a really nice model because it really helps us to identify when risk is relatively low for an asset, or at the very least when downside potential is quite low and upside potential is quite high, that would be these low points down around negative five, the bottom of the scale. And then vice versa, it also tells you these points where upside is limited, but downside is quite large up at the higher points of the scale. And that tends to mark these topping out points in the market where a lot of downside often will follow. And then the other strategy that we're gonna be incorporating in this model is the market direction classifier or mdc so that's what i'm showing you right here and so this is a trend model so the idea is that there's this critical line that's here in green here and if price is above that line that's bullish and if it's below that line that that's bearish you can see that it does a good job of tracking these macro moves and also some of these kind of interim moves to really kind of try to ride the trends as much as it possibly can throughout time so these are the two we're going to build together and on their surface they seem like they're telling you kind of different things you know the the upside downside potential indicator seems like it lends itself well to a dynamic dollar cost averaging strategy where you're you know uh, buying in at increasing amounts as the udpi gets lower here and then selling at increasing amounts as it gets higher here whereas the mdc seems to be more of kind of an on off switch you're either in or you're out based on what it's doing but I want to talk about a strategy where we're going to try to take these two and kind of meld them together to, to a certain degree and see if the combination can be greater than the sum of their parts. Specifically, whether or not augmenting a UDPI-based strategy with the MDC can be more effective than just the UDPI on its own. So we're going to talk about two different strategies and compare them against each other in this video. So the first one is just going to be a DCA strategy based on the UDPI. We've, I've done back tests of this before. You've probably seen it before if you've been following the channel. The idea with this is that you're going to be dynamically buying and selling, in this case, Bitcoin. We're going to use that as the asset we're looking at here. And we're going to do it based on a UDPI based schedule. So basically, depending on the level of the UDPI, you're either going to buy or sell varying amounts of Bitcoin at that given uh, level. But then we're also going to look at this, DC, this um, DCA plus MDC strategy. So again, UDPI based DCA strategy plus the MDC. And the way this is going to work is you're again going to be buying and selling in a dollar cost averaging approach. That just basically means you're buying a little bit over time and selling a little bit every single day or every week or whatever, kind of spreading it out across time. So that's going to be the same, but we're also adding in this second component here where you're only going to be buying when the MDC is bullish or selling when the MDC is bearish. So that's the wrinkle here. And the idea is that if the MDC is bearish, even if the UDPI is being relatively low, maybe that's still not a place you really want to get in. Maybe you want to wait till the trend is a bit more favorable to start then accumulating at that point and then, you know, hopefully ride things up. So kind of avoid as much of the bear market as possible. Don't really be buying in there and then buy into the beginning of the bull market would be the general idea with that. And then we're also going to be comparing these two against a buy and hold strategy 
because I just like to use that as a benchmark. If you can't beat a buy and hold strategy, then the strategy you're using, you know, why would you do it? Why wouldn't you just buy and hold Bitcoin is the idea. Okay, so now let's talk a bit about what this UDPI based dollar cost averaging schedule is. So dollar cost averaging is this idea that you wanna be buying into the market and selling out of the market across time. You don't wanna just do it in a lump sum. The idea would be that you'd wanna get an average good buying price. So let's say the market's relatively low. Instead of trying to nail the absolute bottom, you would wanna be buying in kind of generally around where the bottom should be. So you'll probably be buying a little bit of the actual bottom, but a little bit around it to try to get an overall average good price. And the idea is that you're probably gonna get a better overall entry doing that than if you try to just throw all the lump sum in there and then maybe kind of get it in a bit too early and miss the absolute bottom or get it in a little bit too late and miss the absolute bottom. The idea is that you might just you might as well just try to get an average good entry. Same thing with exits. You want to generally be selling towards the top without worrying about catching the absolute top. And so with a UDPI based schedule, you're going to be using the UDPI to tell you when the market might be getting close to those really high value uh, points, those low points in the market, as well as those highs, those topping points. And then you want to be selling more aggressively towards the top and buying more aggressively towards the bottom. And so we have these UDPI levels here, you know, negative five, negative four, four, three, et cetera, all the way up to between four and five. So negative five being lowest, that would be kind of where the downside potential is the lowest according to the model, upside potential is the greatest. And then at five, that would be when the upside potential is low, downside potential is very high. And then you have an action that accords to these different levels. So the UDPI is between, for example, negative five and negative four, you'll be buying. And so this is gonna be the schedule used for the, uh, the DCA plus MDC strategy. You would buy only if the MDC is bullish. For the straight up DCA strategy, you would just always buy. You wouldn't worry about the, what the MDC is doing, but this is just for that second strategy that we talked about. And then you have the amount. And so the way that I'm doing it in this back test is that, you know, we're keeping track of how much money, how much cash you have on the side. And then essentially the idea is that you're just going to be applying some multiple of to that, some fraction of your total money that you're going to invest at that given point. And so with this one, it's set up to be quite aggressive at the extremes. So you'll see that you're buying with 15% of whatever money you have down between negative five and negative four. The idea is that these levels don't come very often, they don't stay around super often, so you wanna be relatively aggressive to catch those as, as well as you can. Same thing with negative four and negative three, you'd be pretty aggressive. But then with some of these higher levels, you get a little bit more patient. You know, uh, price can spend a decent amount of time in here, so you're not gonna be looking to put in as, money, as, as much money as quickly at these levels, because you know, you could be getting better deals down here for example, or you just have more time generally at these levels to put it in. So these are gonna be lower percentages. And then as you get up into the sell range, which again, for the DCA plus MDC strategy, we're gonna only be selling if the MDC flips bearish. So basically suggesting that uptrend is uh, over, or at least um, a local uptrend is likely over, or at least weakening. So you're gonna again be selling, and you're gonna be a little bit more aggressive on the sell side with this particular strategy. And again, the reason is that price doesn't tend to spend too long in these price levels or in these UDPI levels. So you might wanna be relatively aggressive to make sure you're able to sell as much as you wanna sell before you know price tops and moves back down. So that's the idea here with these. Now this is relatively arbitrary. I didn't really pick these levels through any particular rhyme or reason. They were kind of just, I wanted something that was more attuned to this where it'd be relatively aggressive at the extremes with a bit more aggressive at, you know, more as you're getting into a bit more extreme sell side um, of the UDPI levels. But really, you know, this could be tweaked. And that's kind of the beauty of something like these strategies or the UDPI is that with something like this, it's really up to the user of what they would want to do with the schedule, kind of whatever works best for them or whatever they want to tailor their strategy. But this is the one we're going to be using in the back test. So both the MDC plus UDPI uh, or UDPI DCA and also the DCA only strategies are both going to be using this same schedule. Okay. So for the final bit of the setup, then we're going to be starting uh, this this back test here at the very beginning of 2016. Again, relatively arbitrarily picked there, um, but that's just the one we're going to be looking at here. And then in this back test, also trading fees are taken into account. So that's important to do in a dollar cost average strategy. You're going to be doing a lot of buying and selling, like literally every day you're buying or selling according to these strategies, or at least this strategy that I'm going to be back testing here. And so you really need to take into account those transaction fees because if you don't, you'll probably get an overly favorable result relative to what you'd actually expect in the real world where you're having to pay a transaction fee on every single time you're buying and selling. So it's important to take that into account. It is taken into account in this back test. Okay, so I'm going to show you the results for the DCA plus MDC strategy. So that's what this white line is here. 
This orange line is the buy and hold strategy. So we're just gonna be comparing against buy and hold here first. That's the buy and hold. And then this green line is the amount of cash that this strategy, the DCA plus MDC strategy has at any given point in time. And I like to show this because it lets you see what the strategy is doing. And when is it buying? When is it selling? So we can see is that kind of going into 2016, um, I should also note that both strategies started with $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. So both are starting at an equal playing field. Same with buy and hold. So the MDC plus DCA strategy, the DCA only strategy and the buy and hold strategy all start with $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. And then, you know, these the DCA strategies trade based on the rules that are set for them. So you can see is that throughout all of um, kind of 2016, 2017, the DCA plus MDC strategy isn't selling. It's content to stay. You know, the risk levels and the MDC levels as they go are not telling you to ever sell throughout this whole point. Then as we get into the top, as you can see, the it's getting into the top here, suddenly you see a lot of selling happening as we're going in here. So whereas the buy and hold strategy is stuck just holding their Bitcoin all the way through the bear market, which goes along with the buy and hold strategy, you're never selling. Instead, the MDC plus DCA strategy here is sitting tight it has basically gotten all of its money out and it is content to just sit on it throughout the whole of the bear market and now it's reinvesting in back in here as the bear market starts to break going into up here into 2019. now there's a little bit of selling going up in here to 2019 but not a whole lot and it's mostly waiting for this big run up here to, to start doing the lion's share of its selling you see it really aggressively starting to sell as the market gets up to its market cycle top up over here and you'll see that basically throughout this whole drawdown here it's already almost entirely in cash you know it's holding a little bit of bitcoin that's why there's this difference between its total value the white line here and the green line but not much it's sold most of its bitcoin by this time largely just chilling through the summer of 2021 there's a bit of a swing trade here you see it buys a bit of bitcoin going up into what ended up being the all-time high for bitcoin and then it sells it out or sells out at least some of it going into here and most more or less it kind of sits on its hands until we get down into close to the lows of the bear market where it starts investing quite aggressively to then ride this impulse that we had here up to then set a new high for the strategy. I think this is really important to pay attention to here where whereas the buy and hold is getting crushed in this bear market and is nowhere near where it was back here in terms of its total value right now, the DCA plus MDC strategy is at an all time high. You know, it's, it's above where it was during the absolute price top for Bitcoin over here or the top back here in spring of 21 is actually at a higher value. And that's, I think, something that's useful is that this is actually outperforming and putting in a new high even after this really nasty bear market that was seen. So that's something that's notable there. Okay, so that is the DCA MDC strategy against buy and hold. It's crushing it. You can see it's absolutely destroying it. You know, currently up you know, above 300,000, so turn that 1,000 into about 300,000, uh, or over that here, about 340,000 or so up here. Whereas the buy and hold strategy is, is not even at 100,000 over here. It's closer to about 60,000. So absolutely crushed buy and hold. But now let's look at what DCA only did. So again, this is using the UDPI based schedule like we talked before, but it's not worrying about what the MDC is doing. It's just purely, you know, buying or selling based on what the UDPI level is. And what you can see is that it still beats buy and hold by a considerable amount. You can see this here, but it's not doing it to the same amount that we saw the DCA plus MDC strategy doing it. So it's certainly a good strategy, right? It's, it's crushing the, the market. It's actually, you know, all its value is almost always above, except for these really extreme, you know, points here and this extreme point here. Its value is always higher and it really outperforms during the bear market, but it's not doing it as well as that combination. And we can really see this if we just kind of look at the raw numbers here, where if we just look at kind of the raw total, again, they, they both started with $1,000 worth of Bitcoin. This is what they turned them into. DCA plus UDPI strategy, 120,000, so about a 121X here on your money. DCA plus MDC was actually turned it into 331,000, so about a 331,000 X return on your initial investment of 1,000. Very good, and we saw that already that this should be a lot better than just the DCA plus, um, uh, the UDPI based DCA strategy on its own. This is UDPI, DCA and MDC absolutely crushing it. And then of course, both are, are crushing buy and hold, which only did a 60X in that time. So quite notable here. And so really the takeaway that I have, I have from this is that the UDPI only strategy is good, right? This shouldn't take away from this at that at all. 
you know, it's doubling the return here of buy and hold. You know, it's 120x versus 60x. I'd much rather be in the 120x camp versus only the 60x camp. But then when we look at this combination, it's doing even better. It's going even further. And so if we just look at them all together, so here's buy and hold, here's DCA only, here's DCA plus MBC, you can really see that stark difference where this is really winning out in this particular backtest. So what does that mean? Well, one of the things that I think is interesting about this is that I like the idea of using the MDC to inform a dollar cost averaging approach. Because the idea here is that you're able to avoid a lot of the bear market because the MDC is accurately telling you that market's in a downtrend, probably not a great time to be buying. And so you're basically just avoiding that whole thing in your DCA. You're not buying into, you're not trying to catch a falling knife, basically. You're not catching price as it plummets off of a cliff. And so it helps you to kind of really get in at those opportune times to get out at those opportune times as well. Because again, it's also not having you sell during these early parts of a parabolic run. It's having you sell once you've actually gotten close to the actual top. Just having you DCA out closer to the actual top than what this DCA strategy would be doing, which would have you be selling this entire time going up here. And so that's where I think this is really useful to think about how to combine these two different strategies together. Instead of just only looking at one model, there might actually be strategies that are even better by combining insights from a different one. With all that said though, I did just wanna mention that it's probably not universally the case that a UDPI plus MDC strategy will, will beat a UDPI only strategy by such an extreme amount. And so I'm bringing up the DCA schedule here again, because I wanted to note that this DCA schedule here probably favors that combination approach, MDC plus UDPI, a little bit more than UDPI on its own. And the reason I say that is that there's probably gonna be less time, less number of days, fewer days that you spend where the UDPI is, for example, between negative five and negative four, and the MDC is bullish relative to the number of days where the UDPI is between negative five and negative four. You know, by kind of, by definition, there are gonna be fewer days that meet both of these conditions versus just one on its own, or at the, very, at the most, they'll be the same. And so what that would probably mean is that for the UDPI on its own, it's likely that weights that are a little bit less aggressive that take into account the fact that they're probably gonna be a, a higher number of days to be buying, for example, in this range or to be selling in this range are probably gonna be doing a little bit better than the ones that are this aggressive getting you in kind of immediately the second you're getting into, you know, just below negative four, for example. And so really probably the most fair test to be done would be to do a whole bunch of back tests, you know, thousands and thousands of back tests and not only just starting in the beginning of 2016, but starting in a bunch of different random locations. And then also with a bunch of different random weights here, and then compare a UDPI only approach to a UDPI plus MDC approach to see which one in aggregate across all those thousands of different back tests that are run ends up doing better. So what proportion of the time is the combination approach beating the UDPI on its own versus UDPI being the, the combination approach? And we could also look is that, you know, in general, what types of weights tend to lead each strategy to do the best? You know, as I mentioned, I just chose these relatively arbitrary. There's probably a more optimal number that can be chosen. So in the future, something that I think would be fun to do for pro subscribers is I'll probably go back and do this, where I'll go and I'll do a more systematic back testing where I'm randomizing when the start date is. I'm also randomizing these different weights here and just doing thousands and thousands of iterations to look in aggregate which one outperforms the other and then also looking at under which conditions one does better than the other kind of what weights do better and then also what market conditions does one seem to do better than the other to get a better sense so with this video i really just wanted to kind of introduce this idea that i think this combination approach is interesting i think it it, it certainly can do very well and it certainly can outperform the upi the next step will then to be seeing kind of in aggregate is that the case and then also what conditions seem to favor which approach over the other potentially and with that, we can kind of get more and more nuanced understanding of how these models interact with each other and what strategies might be more or less effective. Now, obviously, none of this is meant to be financial advice. You should make of these data as you will, so on and so forth. But I just wanted to bring this up because it's something I was playing around with and I thought it would be interesting to look at. All right, if you like the content or subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter. A lot of updates, have indicators and more over there. And then as a, another just quick reminder, the Square Digital Pro subscription is going live tomorrow. June 13th. So if you're interested in subscribing, you can do so tomorrow at the sale price.